I did two videos this past week on the China real estate crisis and how I thought it was going to affect the U.S. markets in a very negative way and potentially create a crash. But if you'll look at them, you'll see they didn't get many views. And that's because this isn't something that you as an investor want to think about today. You want to think about how is your stock doing relative to interest rates and inflation and what's it going to do in the next week. And that's where we get into trouble. I referred to the book written about the big short by Michael Berry, where the stock market and and the government just didn't want to recognize in 2006, 7, and 8 that the banks were going to fail. And now I've finished Ray Dalio's book about the changing world order, where he predicts that China is going to bury the U.S. economy because we aren't managing our affairs well, and we're getting too far in debt. But nobody seems to care. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. Okay, let's start this discussion of debt and how it affects our portfolio at the US Debt Clock Dart. Dot org. If you want to find this, this is, that's the URL that you go in. I'm on the second page of it, and what I'm showing you here is our debt situation relative to other nations. Because again, that's who we sell our goods and services to, and who we buy our goods and services from. And we need to understand, are we having a balance of trade, or are we going into further debt every year and how does that affect our um, our stock portfolio and 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 is it going to put our government and our banks into jeopardy so let me start by just explaining the first thing you need to focus on is the ranking they're ranking these by country based on their gross domestic product. And the U.S. has a gross domestic product of $24.8 trillion a year, compared to China, that has a U, uh, which is number two, at 17.4. Now, over here, you see, relative to that, this is our debt. And think of it this way, that um, this is your income, $24,000 a year, but you owe $30,000 a year. Is that a good program? Uh, not so much, I don't think, uh, as opposed to your number one comp competition who has a income of $17,000 a year and a debt of 10000 Now, from that point on, what this shows you is how does the public, um, how do you and I stack up against this? Well, we as a, a civilization or as the citizens of the United States, our debt, our cumulative debt represents 97% of $24 um, trillion. Whereas in China, the, the Chinese public debt is 61%. Japan, eh, kind of out of hand. Uh, the J Japanese people, public debt, and I guess that would be corporations as well, um, their debt is roughly 287%. That means they're, they have a pretty weak economy. Now, over here, what we're saying is how much of this debt, this $30 trillion, is held in the coffers or the the liability, no, the, the receivables of countries outside our borders, 103% of it, okay? So we actually owe more than um, our GDP, actually, it's not of our debt, 103% of our GDP is held by countries outside of our borders. Whereas in China, the 10% of this national debt is held by people outside of China's borders. Why is that, might you say? They are the number one exporter of the world. That's where we buy all our good stuff from. That's where everybody... So their money, their income is staying within their borders. How does that affect you and I? That's what we, we don't care. But how does it affect and, and how does it put 
our portfolio into jeopardy. That's what we got to figure out. Before we go any further, let me just be open and tell you, I don't have the answers to all these questions. If I did, uh, I'd be probably somewhere on Wall Street. No, what I'm here to do is to ask questions and to seek help. Um, I recognize that there's an issue here. And I also recognize that Wall Street isn't interested in it. Uh, it doesn't affect their quarterly bonus. This may not for come to fruition it, as a problem, if it is a problem, uh, for a number of years. And they're interested in the next quarter. So I don't have the answer for you. What I do want to do is create a forum where maybe collectively we can come up with an answer. And that's what Best of Us Investors is all about. I not only seek your advice, I seek the advice of my sponsors. Uh, I'm seeking more sponsors of, of people who can bring technology into my world, into our world. I was approached just recently by a company that is developing an algorithm to do scan of us, of stocks that I can purchase and put on my computer, and it will give me the technology that Wall Street has. I knew this was coming. It's only a matter of when the wealthy have these tools to themselves that someone figures out how to write the program and then make it available to me for $25 a month. I just know that's going to happen. So that's part of what I want to build into this system. But more, more explicitly right now, what's got me worried, what's got me concerned that I wake up in the morning and I, and I say, I don't know what's going on in China. And I, I see pictures of, of people making runs on banks. I even saw a picture of a tank sitting in front of a bank to keep people away. Uh, I don't think that even happened in the Depression, the Great Depression in, in, the, in the late 20s. But that's what's happening over there. And as I just showed you, they're the second largest economy in the world. Their real estate market is twice the size of ours. If it goes down, what happens to my portfolio? Uh, what happens to my holdings? Well, I, I can only look back to 2008 and 2009 and say it crashes. When the banking system of China collapses, do I believe that JP Morgan will feel that ripple? I do. I, do I believe that um, Bank of America will feel that ripple? I do, because I know that they are investors. I know that BlackRock is an investor in China. So if their banks fail, what does that do to my portfolio? I think this is of urgent importance, and that's why I'm getting on my soapbox and reaching out to you and saying, let's put our heads together on this, because certainly nobody's talking about it on CNBC. Oh, they were talking this morning about how China has an advantage in against the oil companies that um, Exxon and Mobil have to uh, adhere to certain um, uh, EV stand, not EV, but uh, uh, environmental standards, while China Petro doesn't. In fact, Ch uh, 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 Exxon and Mobil or uh, uh, Exxon and Chevron had to shut down at, at, at shareholder uh, outrage some of their projects in uh, different countries because they they were pollutant, and they shut them down. And who do you think came in and bought them? China Petro. So they're, they talk about that, but they're not talking about what really got me worried. Because the, our, our Wall Street, our investment community is controlled by the banks. And if, if J.P. Morgan and uh, Wells Fargo and Morgan Stanley have large investments in China real estate, and I know they do, what's that going to do to my portfolio when that implodes? 
I, I, Nita and I were there in 1999, I believe it was, and and we spent a month in China. We drove, we we flew from Beijing to Urumqi, and if you'll go and look on a map, that took us up to the northern, northwestern furthest point in in China, and then we rode buses and trains back to Shanghai, and I saw these buildings being built to to support manufacturing out in the hinterlands and shopping centers being built and and movie theaters being built to house the people that were going to work in those communities. And now we know as a part of deglobalization, and deglobalization is basically us recognizing we can't stay dependent on China for our masks, our rep- respirators, our TVs, our semiconductors. We can't. And we are making moves to uh, to cut that umbilical cord. Well, that is that is directly the cause and effect of what's happening to China's real estate market. They don't need the housing for the people to work in the manufacturing facilities that they've already built. And the wise or middle class Chinese people are the people who finance the build those buildings, and now they're pay- and and they're fifty percent done, and the and the Evergreen and some of the other developers are going bankrupt, and so now the public, the the people holding are uh, with the mortgages are saying, I'm not going to pay a mortgage on a building that is never going to be completed. That's disaster happening. That's 2006, 2008, when the pole dancer, watch the movie, and you'll know what I'm talking about. The pole dancer says, I have three rental homes that I'm paying mortgages on, and I expect to sell them for a profit with by the end of the year, before the balloon mortgage comes into effect. That is exactly what's happening in China, and I'm sure there are some Chinese pole dancers who are in the same predicament as the American pole dancers in Miami that you saw in the movie, um, The Big Short. It's the same thing, and the same thing is happening. No one's talking about it, and who who's going to be left holding the bag? Who's when when General Motors f- filed for bankruptcy? Who was left holding the the workers at General Motors? Who came in and bought fifty percent of General Motors? The Chinese. We don't know these things. I was just told on TV that in order to keep the airlines afloat during the pandemic. We put hundreds of millions of dollars into the airlines industry so that the pilots and 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 the uh, uh, stewardesses and the baggage handlers and the ticket counter people could all get their salary while we were in pandemic, so that they would be there when we needed them when the flight the, the, the airline industry came back up. Who paid for that? You and I, and we are continuing to pay for it. That's part of that $30 trillion debt that you and I are carrying around in our back pocket that nobody's talking about. That's part of the balloon that's going to burst and your stocks are going to go into the tank and somebody's going to say, oh, didn't we tell you about that? No, you didn't. Because you're worried about the cost of gas today, which is just a ripoff by the gas companies. And I understand why they had to do it, because we didn't buy any gas in 2000 and in in the first part of 2001. So their stockholders didn't make any money. In fact, they had losses. But damn it, they came back and really put it to us having the record years that they have, they don't tell us this stuff. So how are we going to figure it out? We've got to work together. 
We cannot go up gap against these people. We have to find a way to access these programs that people are contacting me and saying, hey, I have a scanning program that will do all the technical analysis on all of the stocks in the stock market. Would you and your people like to have it? Would you like to pay us $150 a month for this program? No, I would not. And I don't think all of my people would, but maybe we can work a way that we can have what Wall Street has, the collective knowledge of thousands of people and then algorithms that give us current and pertinent information. Hell, they have one that, that scans all, all the news articles for you. And, it, and you say, I want to know about the Chinese failure of Evergrande in Newmont, Providence, and is there a story specifically about that? And they'll give it to me. This is what's available to the team, to the individual who can afford it. So, uh, this will probably be another, my third video on the Chinese crisis, on the crash of 2023, that won't get much attention because it doesn't answer your overwhelming desire for instant gratification. I don't have the answer. I got the question, and I'm asking you for your help. If you want to be a part of this, go to Best of Us Investors. Come join our Discord and I'll talk to you this, this afternoon at 3 o'clock at our Friday afternoon stock talk. Be talking to you then.